spice it up a little. Okay, literally, I guess. We're making some Italian food. Um, an Italian, let's consider this, this problem. An Italian recipe for making creamy pasta sauce calls for 0.75 liters of cream. Your measuring cup measures only in cups. How many cups should you use? Okay. You've got your Aunt Sophia over in the motherland, and she sends you this recipe because that's the way they measure things over there. But she doesn't translate for you. She's not been skilled in the art of dimensional analysis. You, on the other hand, have. So you can make this conversion. All right, how are we going to do this? We're going to have to find a relationship between liters and cups. Now, you could look on your conversion sheet, and you could look in a lot of places, and there may be a place listed somewhere that has an equivalency between cups and liters. There certainly could be, but there doesn't need to be, right? There are a lot, there's a lot of different ways to solve this problem. All you've got to do is keep track of where you're going and cancel out units properly, and as long as you're left with cups in the end, you're going to get the same answer as if you did it in one step or six steps. It doesn't matter. You understand why. You get that. If you string all this stuff up, you can, you can take the long way around or you can take a shortcut if you've got uh, something that tells you exactly how many cups and liters, or what the equivalency is. If not, it doesn't matter. You, can go, you could go from liters to milliliters, milliliters to pints, pints to quarts, quarts to gallons, gallons to deciliters, deciliters to fluid ounces, and then fluid ounces to cups if you wanted to. That's a ridiculous way to do it. But you could certainly do that, and you would end up with the same answer as if I did it in one step. So realize there's no right or wrong way as long as you keep track of your units and they cancel out properly. Okay? All right, here's what we do know. 0.75 liters. You've got to convert that to cups. How do we do it? Well, here's what we know, at least according to this problem. Maybe it's on your sheet different, but I'm going off this. Okay? Four cups, that's one quart. And 1.057 quarts is one liter. Now, can I use that information? I'm going from liters to cups. If I go from liters, I can use this to go from liters to quarts. Once I'm at quarts, I can go from quarts to cups. So there you go. Now, I know this is kind of kitchen kind of stuff. You may not see the relationship to chemistry, but let's just hold off on that because it'll hit you hard enough and soon enough. Stay with me here on the procedure. So we're going from liters, like you said, to quarts, from quarts to cups. Now, how do we go from liters to quarts? We're going to use that conversion factor right there, the 1.057 quarts equal to 1 liter. Now we've got to figure out how we want to position this so that things cancel out properly. We're going to want to put the liter on the bottom, right? Get rid of that. The quarts on the top. Now, I want to go from, if I stopped my answer right now, my answer would be in quarts if I, if I stopped. I don't want to stop. I want to go from quarts to cups. I'm going to need another conversion factor to do that. So I want to put quarts on bottom so that this cancels out, which would be over here now, right? This cancels out. I'll be left with cups. So then I plug in my numbers. 0.75 times 1.057 over 1 times 4 over 1. When I do that, cancel, cancel. My answer is in cups. I would get that answer right there. I am limited to, remember these are my conversion factors, right? Over here, how many sig figs are there? There's two. My answer has to be rounded to two, 3.2 cups. Okay? Questions about that? You know everything? We'll see. Okay. Now, probably the most important step out of all this, common sense. As Eleanor Roosevelt once said, common sense isn't so common. Um, but think about this before you slap this down as your final answer. Does it logically make sense what is going on? Which is probably bigger, liters or cups? I mean, common sense tells us liters are bigger than cups. So if I have a very small liter value, since cups are smaller than liters, it's going to take more cups to equal that, right? So just make sure that your answer makes sense. In this case, you've got more cups than you do this value here. That makes logical sense. You, don't always, you can't always predict what the number is going to be, but you could certainly decide. If that was like 0.32, you know that that's screwed up. It can't be right. It just doesn't make sense. So employ a little common sense to these problems as you're working through them. Okay. Now, anybody ever pour concrete in here? 
Uh, one of the one of the tough if you order concrete, I don't know if you. I mean, it's, I was poor when we built our first house, so I mean, I had to do this stuff myself. But um, one of the things that's kind of hard to do is to guess up, uh, you know, how much concrete you want to order, right? Because you can't take it back. I mean, they don't they don't take it back. You pay for whatever they put on the truck. Um, how do they 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 sell it? You know, by by the yard or square yard. This is the way that those they sell concrete. Um, now. How do you, if you're taking a floor and you want to you want to make a concrete floor, you can certainly calculate the volume of that floor. If you know it wants to be four and a half inches thick, and, and you know the dimensions, right? How big it is, you can calculate base length times width times height, like we did a while ago. You can calculate that volume. Now, what's tricky is you don't, you know, you, you measure a thing probably in feet. Let's say you measure that in feet. Um, how do you convert that? How do you convert like cubic feet? For example, uh, to cubic yards or meters, you know, cubic meters to cubic yards. When you get into those exponents like that, it changes some things. You got to consider something whenever you do these conversions. It's it's not too bad. It's not hard. Um, but let's just consider this for example. A circle has an area of 2659 square centimeters. What is the area in square meters? Okay, um, you would think you automatically want to realize that that's probably one one hundredth of a meter. That makes sense, and you're right. However, you've got to keep in mind that we're dealing with square centimeters here. So how does that impact canceling out of units? Well, if you write it out like I've showed you to write it out and not do it in your head, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You want to go to meter squared. Here's what you do know. You do know that one centimeter is one one-hundredth of a meter. Now, another way you could write that is there are 100 centimeters equals one meter. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter which one of those you pick. Either one will work. So let's use this conversion factor. We're going from square centimeters to square meters. How am I going to do that? That's how. Keep in mind, I had to have that exponent there. Yes, I got to have this on bottom and that on top for this to cancel out. But if I just had 0.01 meter, and this was not there, 0.01 meter over 1 centimeter, notice that only one of those centimeters would cancel out. I'd still be left with the centimeter. I've got to have it squared, otherwise it won't cancel everything out. So what ends up happening is it's not just a straight one one hundredth of a conversion because you end up squaring this value right here. Okay? So what you end up with is this. Because one times 0 0.01, realize what that is. That's one times ten to the minus two. What's one times ten to the minus two times one times ten to the minus two? It's one times ten to the minus four. Okay? That's where this number came from right there. So you've got one times ten to the minus four square meters over one square centimeter. Now these will cancel and your answer will be in square meters. So just don't forget, if you have to do any um, <coughs> exponential type of, of conversions, keep this in mind right here. You'll have to raise everything in the whole conversion to the power that's necessary to cancel out. That means you have to include that number as well. Questions? <coughs> now we've got a sig fig and round it here. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four. I've given you four up here as your, as your problem. Um, this was a definition, so that doesn't impact us. We've got four sig figs here, so we can go to four. So that's why this answer is in four significant figures. 